So our property, Oak Haven, is 60 acres of woodlands in southwestern Ohio. And we, in the last 23 years, have spent a lot of time removing uh, non-native invasive species. <clears throat> um, you can see we, through this area here, this particular area, uh, last year we cut down a lot of honeysuckle. If you look around at the forest floor a little bit, there's not a lot of um, plant life on the forest floor. Um, what there is growing over here <clears throat> right now, in too much abundance, is garlic mustard. <clears throat> garlic mustard is a very common weed in natural areas that, uh, that people try to get rid of. We're, we're kind of known among our friends as the garlic mustard couple because we spend so much time in uh, removing garlic mustard and, uh, and talking about it. So um, <clears throat> garlic mustard is a uh, non-native plant. Uh, it tends to grow in dense colonies, so it will ex uh, exclude native plant material. <clears throat> it also produces a chemical in the uh, leaves that will spread out into the soil that will uh, inhibit the, the germination of native plant uh, seeds uh, and it might even uh, um, inhibit the growth of mycorrhizal fungi that allow some uh, native plant material to, to collect nutrients. So anyway, it's, a, it's kind of a dirty player. Garlic mustard, it's a, it's a member of the mustard family. Uh, it has, the petals have four, or the flowers have four petals in a cross-like um, pattern there. Anyway, so garlic mustard grows um, in two years. So the first year, it doesn't produce a, a flower. It just grows and has a, a rosette of, of leaves on the ground. Um, they will grow and get bigger into a more pronounced rosette beginning of next year. And then the second year, it will grow and it will spring up or bolt and produce the flowering stalk. Uh, and you can see they have these unique, the flowers, uh, the, the seeds will grow up in these long um, uh, seed pods that uh, point up to the sky. Um, those will turn brown and then they'll drop seeds later on. So our goal is to get rid of garlic mustard. We do that in two ways. Um, when it's low to the ground early on in the season, I'll come along and I'll spray it with glyphosate. 2% uh, glyphosate in a sprayer um, down close to the ground so it's not like spreading it around into the air very much. It's very um, specific on the plants. There's not much early on in the season once the garlic mustard first comes out. Um, actually, it'll almost be here through the winter. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't kill many other things. Glyphosate doesn't have much um, soil activity. So uh, once it's, it's, if it's not on the leaves of the plant, it doesn't kill much. So, but most of our time we spend actually pulling it out of the ground. And if you pull carefully on garlic mustard, it's pretty easy to get the whole root because it tends to grow like this, where it comes down straight into the ground and then run along the ground so it's not very deep. This one has a little deeper that comes in. It almost always has that little bend right at the ground level. So when I'm picking garlic mustard, I try to come down to that little bend and grab on it there and pull it out. That way I've got the root and the whole plant. And garlic mustard is known for the fact that if I throw this down here at this point, there's enough moisture in these plants that even though it's, the roots are up, these seeds will continue to, to um, um, ripen um, and be viable seeds. So we need to remove this from the site. And uh, so when we do that, we'll take this and bag it up and then throw it in the trash can. Uh, our garbage men are, are I'm, sure they're, I'm sure they hate us because in garlic mustard season, we'll have multiple trash cans filled with garlic mustard um, for them to take out. So that's our goal is to get rid of it. We've gotten rid of most of it. Um, it took years before we started to see too much of a, a change. We've learned, we've kind of changed our, our, our procedure a little bit. We used to go through everything carefully once. We've realized now that a lot of these things that look like first year growth will sprout up later on in the season and uh, produce seeds. So we need to take care of that. So we need to go out. We'll try to go out three times uh, and cover all 60 acres of our property uh, three times during the year, once early on and then uh, two more times later on, uh, which is nice for two things. It gets different things as they come up. Uh, you just naturally will miss some things. 
Uh, plus, we don't have quite the volume that we're carrying back. It used to be that we were carrying back trash cans of, of uh, garlic mustard out of the woods. Now, by the time we're on our third time, uh, this is the beginning of May, by the time we're on our third picking through the property, we hopefully won't find very many of these bulky, uh, bulky plants. So we generally pick, um, we go through and spray early on, March. You can pick them in March too. They're generally smaller, they haven't flowered yet. Uh, they don't have this nice um, visible flag on top, but, uh, but you can find the plant because there's not a lot else that's up. Um, and then in April we'll go around and do it again. It's starting to come up. You might start to see some flowers um, and uh, you can kind of see it even though some of the other wildflowers are growing up. And then in May, it, it has this tall, long, tall stalk. The end of May, the flowers will be gone, but you'll see these tall stalks with this pretty unique um, mustard-like uh, uh, seed pod or seed pods at the top um, that you can look at ground level and uh, and pick them out in the woods from from a fair distance. So it's not unusual to find garlic mustard growing like this, where you have um, a lot of first-year growth and then a few second-year growth. Uh, coming up. Our procedure, we used to try to get rid of all of this. It's just not time uh, feasible to, to pick all of this first year growth. We re came to the realization that next year, most of this first year growth won't have survived. So whether it outcompetes itself or um, something comes along or it dies just of natural causes, I don't know. But if you look at it, there's hundreds of first year growth and maybe a dozen of second year growth. So our goal is to remove the seed bed, or seed bank, remove the seeds from the seed bank. Um, so this isn't going to do us too much harm right now, but this does, because this will produce thousands of seeds, hundreds of seeds, I don't know how many seeds, a lot of seeds. So the goal is to remove the seeds, uh, and then we will come back next year and get this when it is grown up into the, the taller plant material. We'll mark it with a flag. We carry pin flags with us as we go through the woods. A pink flag means there's garlic mustard here. And then as we're looking through the woods, we can look for the pink pin, flag, pin flags, excuse me, um, and know that that's where we need to go and see if there's uh, any garlic mustard that we need to, to pick. Now think about that for a moment. So if we have the opportunity to go around and put pin, uh, pin flags by the garlic mustard we find, that means that we're finding it scattered which is very different from the way it was 23 years ago when we first started managing this property, where there would be carpets of garlic mustard. Now, I don't want to give the impression that we can always rely on these bold, three-foot-tall plants with white flowers on it that make it easy to see. Garlic mustard can grow and can flower. I don't have any right here. I'll, I'll add a picture. It can be two inches tall and form a flower and produce seeds. So. Uh, it, 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 you need to look very carefully. Um, it seems like everything here is all the tall stuff. Uh, that makes it easier. But I think when we've picked all the tall stuff, I think we select for smaller stuff. I think we're, we're artificially selecting for kind of what I've called a, a crypto-invasive. Uh, it's a, a smaller version of the invasive species that are harder to find and harder to pick. Okay, so I talked about the, the uh, crypto-invasives. We have the, exactly that situation here. So, walking by, look at this plant. Two or three inches tall. Even at that age, comes out with the same root that comes out along the surface. Um, that's what makes this a difficult thing. <laughs> So that's what we do with garlic mustard. Um, I hope that you're encouraged by that and that you would be interested in uh, taking uh, a natural area and adopting it perhaps and uh, clearing it of must uh, garlic mustard. If you have garlic mustard on your property that you would uh, try to get rid of it because it really does uh, inhibit the native plant community. And that's our goal. We want to see native plants. We want to see diversity and uh, you can help with that. So thank you for watching.